Welcome to this installment of our series on configuring Cisco Threat Response. In this episode, we will cover configuring a module that integrates with Cisco's cloud DNS security platform known as Umbrella. I'm Ben Greenbaum from Cisco's Advanced Threat Solutions team. Let's get started. First, I'll show you an investigation without the module, walk you through configuring the module, and then show you that same investigation again, now with all the functions that the Umbrella module brings to the platform. So let's have a quick look at an investigation of a domain in threat response, but without Umbrella. In this investigation, we have one domain, ilo.brins.pl, and we can see that it is malicious and that it resolved to this IP address, which is also known to be malicious. We can see that this information came from Talos Intelligence and the AMP Global Intel module, and that we have many, many judgments on this domain, all with a malicious disposition. We can also see up here, zero sightings in my environment, which we could also see immediately up here where it says zero targets, and that should be good news. That means that nothing has been detected inside my network by any of the modules that I have configured so far. But let's set up that umbrella module just to be sure. Click on modules, click on configure modules, select the umbrella module type in the dropdown, you can give it a different name than Umbrella here if you need to. And then we've got a number of different API tokens, keys, secrets, organization IDs, etc. that we need to find. This is one of the more complicated modules to configure in Threat Response, and it may take, you know, two, almost three minutes to get it done. Now, we need different API tokens and credentials because the Umbrella module actually uses three different Umbrella APIs simultaneously to bring you the three different functions that are available. Those three functions are investigate, enforcement, and reporting. Investigate gets you the threat intelligence that Umbrella has on any domain that you are investigating in threat response. Enforcement is what gives you the ability to block domains by adding them to your custom Umbrella block lists. And then reporting is the feature that tells you whether anything that is using Umbrella DNS security in your organization has been seen requesting the IP address for the domains under investigation. I should point out that you might not have access to all three of these APIs, and that's fine. Depending on what umbrella licensing your organization possesses, you may only have access to one or two of these APIs, and you could use just that one or those two, and the umbrella module will still perform for you those tasks. If you don't have an API key for any of these three functions, you can just skip it, and the other one or two will work just fine. So let's get started collecting these API keys from the umbrella user interface. We'll start with the investigate API credentials. You can get to the Investigate dashboard by hitting Investigate anywhere from within the Umbrella user interface. And then to get your API keys, hit Investigate API Access. Now this is a separate add-on license that you can get which gives you access to the Investigate API, which then Threat Response will use on your behalf. So over in API Access Tokens, click on Create New Token, give it a title that makes some kind of sense to you, and click Create. And here we have the token, now copy that token, and then we'll go back to Cisco Threat Response and enter this into the module settings. The next thing we're going to get out of the Umbrella user interface is the enforcement key. Now this is only available if you have access to the enforcement API that comes with platform licensing, but if you have that, go to policies, click the drop down arrow, all the way at the bottom go to integrations, up here in the top right click the add button, and you'll get the opportunity to create a new integration. Name it click create and now you'll see it in the list of integrations click on it to open it enable it and then this is also where we get the authentication credentials that we require so grab this entire url here copy it click save on the way out and then back in cisco threat response paste that into the umbrella integration url of the enforcement section of the umbrella module now for the last, but certainly not least, function provided by this module, we need to get some information from the reporting API here back in the Umbrella user interface. Hit the drop down arrow next to admin and click on API keys, and we're going to create, at the top right, another API key. You will then be presented with a question, what should this API do? Select Umbrella reporting, and then click create and you will see your new Umbrella Reporting API key in the list. So grab each of those things, and paste them into the appropriate locations,
in the module configuration screen back in threat response. Now organization ID is not over here, but we get that up here in the address bar out of the URL. So copy that, go back to threat response, and paste that in in the last slot here. Click create module, and here we see our completed umbrella module. Now one last thing, copy this secret and store it somewhere secure because as it says, you will not be able to get this secret again if you revisit this page. Click the box to indicate that you understand this, check the documentation if needed, and click close for your API key to become active. So back in threat response, let's do that same investigation we started with again. Now I know it's taken closer to four minutes than to the two or three minutes that I mentioned, but bear in mind, I talked a lot. And here we see the results of our investigation. Immediately we can see that we have two targets. Something in those networks reached out and asked for a resolution for this known bad domain. We also see that in addition to the Talos Intelligence judgment, we have a new Umbrella judgment, saying that Umbrella also has a poor reputation filed for this domain. And our third and final function brought to us by the Umbrella integration is that we can now click on this domain and add it to our Umbrella block list. So now it's blocked enterprise-wide. Anything that is using the Umbrella DNS security platform, regardless of whether it has any other technology protecting it, will be blocked from accessing this domain. And of course, we can also pivot through to the Umbrella interface to get more information about this domain. We've now configured and demonstrated all three of the Umbrella functions currently available to threat response users. Global intelligence, the ability to get information about domains under investigation from the Umbrella Threat Intelligence Data Store. Local insight capabilities, the ability to see if any of your own machines have tried to resolve the domains under investigation, and response capabilities, giving you the ability to add those domains to a block list if desired. These three functions put together add a significant dimension of ability to threat response and to your usage thereof. For more information about how to configure Cisco Threat Response, stay tuned to this playlist. I hope that this tutorial was useful to you, and as always, Thank you very much.